Hello, I'm Joseph and I converted my 2015 Subaru Outback into a camper so I could travel more affordably. My first trip was to try it out in Labrador in the really early spring just to see how well my heating system works inside the car. So I broke this trip down into five legs. Leg one and two I covered in a previous video. Leg three was from Labrador City all the way across Labrador to the ferry to get to Newfoundland. Leg four is from Newfoundland down to the southern point of Newfoundland to the next ferry. And leg five is from that ferry through Nova Scotia all the way back into Fredericton, New Brunswick where I live. So just like every cool video, it has to start off with a sunrise. Although in this case, it's a sunset played backwards because I really don't like getting up that early. I got into Labrador City about midday on a Saturday. Um, first thing I did was I went to the local Walmart. It's the only Walmart in all of Labrador. Uh, went there and to my shock, candy was actually significantly cheaper than it was in New Brunswick. So I stocked up on some candy. Um, after that, I realized I was getting pretty fatigued and tired from just traveling um, after leg one and two of the trip. So I took Sunday off. Um, Sunday morning, I went to a local church. I met some of the people there and they informed me that the road from Labrador City all the way to Goose Bay and down to the ferry was completely paved and so I wouldn't have to deal with gravel roads anymore. So that was pretty exciting. I got to test out my car in some cold. Um, before I went to bed, it was getting down to about negative 14, negative 15. Um, in this video here, it only shows about negative 10 outside. But I got down to a total of, I checked the coldest temperature on my thermometer in there and it got down to a total of negative 20 that night. So Sunday morning when I was waking up, I started realizing my tire in my car was going soft. Um, I did have a compressor with me, so I was able to fill it up with air right away, um, but I had to keep a close eye on it. When I left Monday morning, I refilled up my tire with air and hit the road. As I got to a spot where I found a little river to take some pictures of and and hang out, make some breakfast by, a trucker saw me fill up my tire with air again, so he stopped by. At which point he told me that the birds there are really, really tame and you could actually get them to eat right out of your hand. So I spent the next 45 minutes trying to attract a bird to come to my hand and eat out of my hand. Monday evening, I got into Goose Bay. I found a spot to make myself some supper and to spend the night. Then the next morning, I woke up and right away got on to getting some laundry done and getting my flat tire fixed. The guy who helped me get the flat tire fixed, he told me about the coastal drive from Goose Bay down to the ferry. He told me it was the most beautiful drive he had done. So I'm pretty excited to check that out well the tire is fixed hopefully and now we are headed to finish laundry and then start exploring happy valley goose bay next i went to the military museum i toured through that there it's connected to the canex in the actual military base there in goose bay um, when I was leaving, I asked the cashier of some other cool things to do while they're there. While I was there, um, she told me that the there was a dog sled team that I would be able to possibly go out with. So I called the dog sled team, but unfortunately he didn't pick up. So I'm, I wasn't able to get on a dog sled. And here we start, Labrador Coastal Drive. Oh, let's see, what does the next sign say? Next fuel service, 392 kilometers. Check your fuel, we are on full. I did, so, I decided to go off of the 510, which is the road that takes us to the ferry, and explore up here, which gets us to car right. Uh, it's just a little, tiny little looking town, way up here. Apparently it's up a gravel road, so we've got, looks like 91 kilometers 
on this gravel road so we're gonna I don't know if I'm gonna go all the way out there or not because we've already had one incident with driving on gravel roads and tires but we will see how far I decide to go maybe we'll find some cool views and stop there for the night so I got into Cartwright at about 8 p.m. I went to a convenience store. It was the only thing that was open. Uh, the cashier there asked me what I was up to because he could probably tell I wasn't local. And so I told him about my trip and he was like, where are you staying tonight? And I was like, I haven't planned where I'm going to stop it. He's like, oh, you can just park right here. He's like, there's a helicopter landing area here. So if you hear a helicopter in the morning, just make sure you're not in the way of that. And then the next thing he asked me was, like, do you have a Wi-Fi or cell phone service? And I was like, no. He's like, here's my Wi-Fi password. Just a super nice, nice guy. Um, I'm going to say I really, really enjoyed the hospitality of Cartwright. At about 2 a.m., I got woken up by a snowmobile. Or he started yelling at me. So I opened my door and he comes walking over and he was like, are you okay? You're good. You're warm. You got everything you need. So just like super nice and told me how he was looking for his buddy who was supposed to be coming in that night and he saw my car and he would just want to make sure everything was okay so I was very very impressed with the hospitality of the people from Cartwright all right so we're back on the 510 now it's a nice little side trip off to Cartwright um, yeah overall like I don't know I'd go again in the summer. I don't think that's worth going there in the winter. It was kind of cool, but not not quite not quite a winter destination. But we're back on the 510, and we are headed towards uh, Mary's Port, I think it was called. So the actual town's name was Mary's Harbor. Um... I had a very uncomfortable experience there with a local. It would probably take me three minutes to explain the whole thing, so I'm not going to waste everyone's time. But there was a couple few things that were interesting to see. Lots of boats that were there. Um, a nice little convenience store. And then I left there pretty quickly. After that there, I headed to Red Bay. So Red Bay was a really, really gorgeous town to be in. There wasn't a lot to do. There was a historical site there, but it wasn't open. So all I did was I spent the night there. Um, there was a convenience store that was locally there. Uh, that was, if you're road tripping, that's a really key place to have to remember. They had showers there that you could take a shower. Um, ice machines and everything you would need to be road tripping by. Um, after that there I went I recorded the sunset or at the start of the video used as a sunrise and then I just took a few pictures and carried on my way so spend the night at Red Bay a little convenience store there they were very nice to let us park in the parking lot there well 71 kilometers to the ferry and we don't have to be there until this exact time tomorrow morning so we got 24 hours to kill and only 70 kilometers left to go now so let's go figure out what adventures we guys can come up with so while I was trying to kill time I found this lighthouse so when I went to go explore around the lighthouse I saw the sign said the lighthouse was open from 9 till 5 every day and so I checked the door and the door was unlocked. And so sign said it was open, door was unlocked. Um, walked through, gave myself a nice self-guided self tour. And after that there, I went and checked out some, um, some of the water um, while it was frozen, but got to check out a little bit of the ice and then continued on and went to the ferry. Well, made an attempt to come here and get on the ferry a day early. Um, we got in the standby line and just didn't quite make it onto the ferry. I think they did 85 vehicles on the ferry. It was a full ferry. Um, it hasn't run in a week. So uh, it's a good thing I came because now I find out that they're leaving at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, providing the ice assessment goes well. So that means I have to be here for 7 instead of 9.30 like I was originally expecting. So 
not a completely loss from coming here today, but I now know what I'm getting myself into for tomorrow. So now it's time to explore the last little bit of Labrador and then off to Newfoundland. While I was waiting for the ferry, I decided to go explore the last little bit of Labrador and then go down into Quebec a little ways to see as far as that road would take me. I did a little bit of hiking, I did some sightseeing, saw a little village. Um, after that there, I went back to the little town that the ferry leaves from, or close to where the ferry leaves from. Um, went and had a drink that night and just hung out, got a real meal at a, that the little pub there. And that's when I realized that the time there is Quebec time and the ferry leaves in Newfoundland time. Um, so there's an hour and a half difference. So I had to do some quick little math and make sure my alarms were all set correctly. And I was able to get to the ferry on time. All right, it is 4.26 Quebec time, which is six or almost six o'clock uh, Newfoundland time. And a ferry, I don't, um, leaves, well, they're doing an ice inspection at 6.30 and start loading at 7 so I'm heading there early make sure I get on this ferry so we'll see if it, if it sails today the ferry was cancelled for today uh, ice pressure was too high um, it's a 30 hour drive to go straight home from where I am taking all the roads or it's 23 and a half hours of driving and the ferries so I can either wait 24 hours and hit the uh, and try again at the ferry, or I can just turn around and start heading home right now. Um, I think I'm just going to start heading home now on the roads because I don't want to waste a full extra day of waiting for a ferry and then find out I have to do 30 hours of driving in three days instead of four. So that's the plan. We're gonna go top up with some fuel use a washroom make sure we got enough food and then hit the road try to get as far as I can maybe I'll get as far as Labrador City today that'll be a huge push but uh, if I can get to that distance then, then it's just a matter of driving through all the back roads again so we'll see we'll see how this goes the weather does look pretty decent and it's one degree outside already so I think the road should be pretty solid for the whole trip from here to from here to Goose Bay will be our first stop. Do a little pit stop there, Labrador City, hopefully for tonight. And yeah, see what we do from there. All right, so check engine light came on here in cold Labrador. It's like negative 12 outside. Uh, it was just a little oil, um, so we're gonna go top it up with oil. It's a Subaru, so. Sometimes they burn a little, especially when it's gone for like long road trips. Um, I find that it burns just a little bit. So I got in the back a little bit of oil. So we're going to go top her up. back in Labrador City. Yesterday we crushed out the huge drive all the way across Labrador. Went from right where the ferry is down by the Quebec-Labrador border all the way to the other side on the Quebec-Labrador border. <laughs> um, yeah, so it turns out we made the right call. Ferry was cancelled again today. So if I would have tried to wait out for the ferry, that means I would be starting this drive today, not yesterday. And I wouldn't have got my full refund for the uh, for the other ferry to get off of Newfoundland so um, plans for today we're going to go stop at Tim Hortons because I really need to use the bathroom and I'm kind of craving a Timbit after that we're going to take the uh, wow I can't even think today 
after yeah so after i'm done at tim's i'm gonna start heading into quebec trying to drive straight down um that's where the 180 kilometers worth of gravel roads are so fingers crossed um let's hope we don't pop another tire uh yeah so i'm gonna take that one a lot slower there's a lot of beautiful views honestly this is kind of working out as a bonus like as a positive because like quebec was like northern quebec was really really beautiful whereas i know labrador or say newfoundland would be really gorgeous as well but i think doing newfoundland as its own separate trip is going to be smarter and being able to just do this a second lap because even coming up the labrador coastal drive driving towards the like south down the coastal drive was like it was okay it wasn't like insanely good or anything it was kind of like the intent like the the suspense for what you're actually going to see when you finally got like past those 400 kilometers to get to actually to the coast and it just wasn't like as great it's not like going through zion national park where you get like this one kilometer and then all of a sudden boom it's gorgeous there it was just like four hours of driving before like you saw something and it was like having been down the west coast i found that wasn't as beautiful but when i turned around to come back up from the ferry i don't know whether it was just the angles or the direction of seeing it or just the fact that i saw everything all right away but it, it was just it seemed more pretty to go through the labrador coastal drive going north than it was going south we finally made it past the first gravel patch i was about 80 kilometers of just all gravel road that's where i had my first flat on the way out here so we're gonna get to the next rest stop go check all the tires double check they're all good but we made it through and now it's just straight cruising south um there's a gas station to fill up at i think it's about 150 ish kilometers from here um and then after that it's next uh, 100 kilometers of gravel again until we get to the dam so so far everything seems to feel good once we get to a rest stop we'll check over the whole car and then we will be continuing south i wish it was summer and i could see the blue water and that there's no power lines here so you could actually see these mountains but in all honesty quebec is better than labrador Except for the ocean. She's a little dirty though. Well, we made it past the gravel point, or gravel road, I guess. And we are now at the dam. One of the dams. There's one over on the other side over there somewhere that I have to drive by. And that and there's the one that creates all the power. All that gravel road took a toll on the car. <laughs> this is cool. So this is the top of the power dam. Oh, and that's the road. I think we got to go down eventually. But yeah. This is what it looks like from the top.
well, I'm not sure how long of a nap I just took, but I feel better. I think uh, sleeping in a vehicle where snowmobiles come by all the time has not been helpful. Anyhow, let's go finish this drive, get into some reception, and, and see what the plan is after that. I'm not sure if you can see it, but they have a countdown at the bottom of the stoplight for this construction light, and I really like that idea. Like, I know there's 102 seconds left before the light turns green, because when I was over way back up on the 389, they had, they had it, but it wasn't working. And so we were sat there for like, me and the truck in front of me, we were sitting there for like almost two minutes, and it was like, when is this gonna end? But here they got the light on. Are the numbers working? I like it. So leg four and five didn't end up happening unless we want to count the return from the ferry all the way to Quebec and then to Fredericton as four and five. But I'm going to leave those parts out. I'm going to wrap up the video here with the ferry right um, along the St. Lawrence River. And that was my Labrador trip. I would definitely recommend going out to Labrador if you haven't gone out to Labrador before. Thanks for watching.